Hi everyone, my name is Courtney. I write under the pen names Lyra Parrish and I'm one half of the USA Today best-selling duo Kennedy Fox. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about my backlist and what my plans are in the future regarding that. So many of you have heard me talk about over the last probably year where I've said that I'm gonna eventually redo my backlist. But after thinking about it really hard and just having time to look at my backlist and where it's at and what work needs to be done on it, I have decided to unpublish my books. And it's not something that is happening right at this very moment because my books are currently enrolled in Kindle Unlimited. <sighs> just gonna just gonna stop there. My last day in Kindle Unlimited I think is October 7th and I have already unclicked the box to make sure that it does not renew and as soon as my Kindle Unlimited commitment has completed I will be unpublishing all of my books. It's hard guys. This was a hard decision. Just what I think needs to be done at this point. And there's reasons for that. The first reason is whenever I remove them, I feel like it will light a fire underneath me to actually get those books put back up. I am also going to be recovering every single book that I have because I am using a different cover designer and I have purchased exclusive images for covers. And so my plan is to basically get all of the covers redone. With that being said, all of the blurbs need to be rewritten and the contents needs to be changed. And it's a lot of work. I've got eight books right now. I just don't feel like I want those books there. If they're gonna be available for people to purchase, I want to make sure that they're the best thing that I can provide somebody right now. I know five years from now, I may say, you know, those books need to be redone again or whatever the case is, but I am in a different place in my craft and in my career than I was when I first started. Lyra was the pen name where I learned how to be an author. Even when you're in your like sixth, seventh, eighth, even 10th book being published, you are still learning. Even today, after 25 books being published, I am still learning but the person that I am today compared to who I was back in 2013, 2014 time period when I was writing these books is completely different. And I think that I have more to offer. There's things that I don't really like that are in those books currently at the moment that I want to delete and rewrite and just make them a better story. The foundation is there, but there are things that I want to change. And being a self-published author, I have the opportunity to do that. I know some people may ask me, well, why are you doing this? Why are you spending time doing this when you've got Kennedy Fox going. Kennedy Fox is what most of my focus is on. That is, you know, my number one. I've said this several times, it's what I spend most of my time on. But before Kennedy Fox was ever a thing, I had my own books and my own passion projects and my own stories that I wanted to write. And those are out there in the world right now and I don't like the fact that my best work is not available. Granted, right now they're not selling very well. You can go on Amazon and you can check the ranks. I have not pushed them. I have stopped all ads on them. I am at this point in my life where I don't want people to download them because I want to make them better first. Granted, there are people who have downloaded them and who read them, who enjoyed them, but I personally know it's not my best work right now. Back then when I wrote those books, I was super proud of them because I was in a different place as an author whenever they were written. And we all grow and we all learn. And as self-published authors, we have the opportunity to go back and to make changes and to make it better and to make it more marketable for the market right now. And so that's my goal. You all know that my main goal is to quit my job in 2020. I have talked about this so much. And when I talk about it, it makes me so happy because I know that I'm on track. Right now I'm looking at May of 2020, but if things work out how I want, it could be sooner. But you all know, I am a planner and I am not gonna jump the gun for anything. And there are specific 
financial milestones that have to be hit before I quit my job. I have to have so much in my savings. I have to make sure that I have zero revolving debt and I want to make sure that I max out the money that that's currently in my HSA which is a health savings account. So if something does happen to me health wise then I have the money saved to take care of that. This year I maxed it out and then next year my plan is to max it out up to the point to where I quit my job. You all know or maybe you don't if you're new here. I have kidney disease and while I have taken measures to make sure that my health is more improved, I have to have testing every year for that. It's stage two kidney disease, which means two more levels from now, I could be on dialysis. I refuse to let that happen, but I have to make sure that my weight and my health and just the food that I'm eating and the things that I'm drinking, like I have to make sure that I watch that because I don't want my kidneys to get any worse because once you progress, you can't go back. And so for me, the reason why I've kept my job for so long is because I wasn't in great health. I'm in better health now than I was five years ago. But to just go and quit my job, knowing that I was not in the best health, just did not seem feasible to me. Although I could have quit my job in 2017. By the time April had come around in 2017, I'd already made two times what my job paid me. But I had terrible health <laughs> so I kept my job because of insurance purposes and if you're not from the US or if you're not aware of how much insurance costs for me to basically pay for the insurance that I currently have with my job it would cost me $15,000 and that's expensive I don't know many self-employed people who can just be like, oh, $15,000, here you go. On top of my student loans, I have a car note, and all these other things. It's just not very smart to quit your job if you can't just pay for everything easily. That was a long tangent. But the point is, is that next year I'm planning to quit my job. And I want to make sure that when I quit my job, I have income coming from several different places. It's stupid to quit your job and be like, oh, well, the only thing that's paying my bills is Kennedy Fox. That's dumb, guys. I don't plan on quitting Kennedy Fox. We've already planned through 2021. I'm pretty sure that we're probably gonna be writing together for the end of time. But you never know what could happen. Um, I could get sick or Brooke could get sick. Not that I want any of those things to happen, but I have to be prepared that whenever I quit my job, I can pay for my bills that I have if Kennedy Fox was to end or if something happened where we couldn't write together. And so I have to make sure that I am covered and that I am prepared. And so relaunching Lyra is basically a security blanket for me. It's a way for me to make extra income. Whatever I make from those books after I relaunch them is gonna go into a savings account. It's not gonna be money that I spend. It's gonna be money that gets saved, you know, because maybe one day I will want to retire and I may not want to write eight books a year. I don't see that happening but if I wanted to take a year off for some reason if we were like ahead like 12 or 15 books if I wanted to take some time off to travel to you know explore the world or whatever having a savings account with just money being put into it is smart. I am a very financial driven person. You all know that I'm an accountant in my day to day. I am also a planner. I don't do things on a whim when it comes to big life changes. I'm not just going to be like, oh, well, I can quit my job. I'm going to quit. You have to prepare for those things. And if not, then you're setting yourself up for failure. And my goal is when I do quit my job that I am never going back. I don't ever want to work for another person again once I leave this corporate job. Relaunching Lyra will allow me to save some extra money and it gives me an outlet to do my passion projects. Um, I don't know if you all know this or not, but I have a series that I have not finished that people still message me to this day about and that bothers me. It bothers me that I promised something and that I started something and I never finished it. And so my goal is in 20. 20 to start relaunching my backlist. Single is a serial right now. It's 30 to 45,000 word novellas. My goal is to put them together, rewrite some scenes, and then make it a duet series and relaunch that. My goal for that is for the first book to be relaunched in December and for the second book to be 
hopefully relaunched in January, but I don't know as of right now. The Weakness series, those titles will not be changing. Those will be released sometime early in 2020. The goal is to rewrite them. They're currently in first person past tense and they're being rewritten into first person present tense along with some chapter changes and additional content added, characters being more fleshed out, and scenes cut that I don't really care for at this very moment. Those covers are now officially made and they are absolutely beautiful. I am so in love with them. Ah, oh, I love those covers. So that is happening sometime early 2020. Then I have Eluded and it was the book that I've talked about being one of the biggest mistakes that I ever did in my career when I first started. And this book is getting a title change. I have not decided what I'm going to rename it. I will be cutting a lot of scenes that I just do not care for that's more of a darker book and rewriting the ending. So there is currently no real romance with the two main characters and I feel like I did that book a disservice by not giving them a proper happily ever after. And so that's going to be rewritten and reworked. I do have a pre-made cover that I bought for that, but I'm not completely in love with it anymore now that I've looked at it. I'm kind of like, what was I thinking? Pre-mades get me every single time. If you tell me I can get a cover for 60 bucks and I like it right then, I'm probably going to buy it, which is pretty stupid. But <laughs> pre-made covers, I buy them and then they never get used. I should know this about myself already. So that book is getting redone. And then there's Ace, which is the beginning of my Band of Brothers series. It's a rock star romance. Each brother was supposed to get their own book. The first brother, which was Ace, got his own book. And I loved writing it because music is a pretty large part of my life. If you're not aware, I've been singing since I was like... <laughs> in third grade and did a lot of musical theater in college and my husband's a musician he plays guitar and piano and sings and and does a bunch of crazy things as well and so music is like a driver in my life I absolutely love it and you know if I wasn't an author I'd probably have CDs being released or something especially in the world of indie these days, but I want to finish that series. And so my goal is to relaunch my entire backlist. It sounds like so much considering how many books we have releasing next year. Um, but if I don't have a daytime job where I'm there from eight until 5.30, six or seven or eight, depending on what day of the month it is, then this stuff is doable to me. So the goal is to relaunch my backlist. It's currently eight books. It will turn into seven books and retitle, reblurb, rewrite almost every single one of those books and then continue on with the Band of Brothers series and complete it, the four books. The first book will probably be retitled. I'm not completely on board with keeping it the band member's name. I think I want to change it to something else that's more rock star, that's more marketable probably should have thought about that back in 2015, 2016, but you know, didn't really know what I was doing. The thing is, is that those will be relaunched. Being realistic, I think that Ace, as its current title, I would probably do a complete cover reveal and all of that to launch the series. And the goal would be to have the book completely rewritten and then have the other three books already written, ready to go, and then release them very close together, like once a month coming in 2021. That's the plan. Um, unpublishing these books is going to be very hard for me because I know that once I unpublish them, the record of Lyra Parrish on Amazon, all those reviews, everything disappears. I'm basically wiping away my publishing existence and that's hard. That's very hard. And Sure, I could re-upload the new files and do all that, but I think that starting with a clean slate is the right thing to do. I've thought about it for a while and it just seems like the right thing to do. Just want to give these books the opportunity that I couldn't give them back in the day. And it's exciting, but it's also very scary to know that I am going to delete everything. 
everything, 200 reviews will just disappear. And that's hard. That's hard. I worked really, really hard on those books. But I know that it's not the end. I know that it's the beginning of something else, something better, something new. And I'm really, really excited about that. I do have some other books that are half written before we started Kennedy Fox that are really not that bad that I feel like I could rework and finish up. And so my goal is to completely relaunch my backlist over the course of 2020 and then start releasing new books come 2021. And there's some like really nerdy stuff that I want to write. <laughs> And there's other things that just won't fit underneath Kennedy Fox's brand. So Lyra Parrish, guys, I think that it will be a good place to put those books. I think that the books that I have already have written, it'll be a great place to finish those up and publish them. And it'll just be something fun and not so serious. Kennedy Fox is serious enough for me for the rest of my life, but it's good to have multiple projects going and I'm really super excited about it and I hope that you allow me to bring you along on this journey of deleting my books and relaunching them because it's gonna be a lot but my goal is to bring you all behind the scenes with me as I do that stuff because I think that you might benefit from that that you might see a way that I do something that is very helpful books will not be going back into Kindle Unlimited ever again ever again. They will be on all platforms and my goal is to create an LLC that I can publish these books under uh, for my pen name so then it's all just beautiful and pretty underneath everything. So there's a lot to do. I've made a mile long list of things that need to be done. Come beginning of October those books will be removed and it's going to be hard. I'll probably record it because I want to document this and, and bring you along with me. And I think that y'all will want to see this as well because yeah, I'm publishing eight books. Crazy, but I'm excited about it. And I hope that y'all want to come along on this journey with me. That's going to be it. I just wanted to talk to y'all about that because it's something that I've really been thinking about. And I don't think that I've shared that yet that I was unpublishing my entire backlist. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate all of the comments, the likes. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do that. Ring the bell so you can get a notification every single time that I post. Hope that you have an amazing, awesome week. You accomplish all your goals and you write all the words. And I'll see you again in my next video. Bye guys.